All right, perfect, good. So I think we're about to hit eight, so we'll kick start. Um, Pierce, just let me know once we're good. Yep, we're live. All right, perfect, awesome. All right, guys, um, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Grover, I'm the founder of Outscale. Um, thanks all for joining in today. So I, today I have a very special guest, Paramjit, or Param, uh, as he prefers to be called, uh, joining in from GSN from Bangalore. And today is going to be a jam-packed sort of a fun session talking about his career uh, in the gaming industry, uh, spanning across um, years of experience working on a lot of different kind of games. We'll get into uh, games uh, that he's working on today as well. Uh, right now, he's working with GSN, and GSN already is a fairly big brand. Some of you already might know the name and get familiar with it. So today, we'll get to uh, deep dive into his career along with also uh, take a sort of a, you know, uh, an educational route into understanding what game design is all about, how today folks can prepare about game design, uh, getting started in, with their career in game design, and what kind of sort of exciting game projects that uh, he's working on with GSN and so on and so forth, right? So feel free to let us know if you have any questions in the chat, no matter where you might be joining us, whether on Zoom, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, the Outscale team will help us curate some uh, awesome, interesting questions for Param. And feel free to throw them in the chat as well at any given point. And uh, I'll do my best to uh, poke Param as much as possible with interesting questions. So welcome, Param. Um, any quick words before we get started? Hey, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, that's all. all right, let's get started. All right. Awesome. So good. So I think uh, you've had a long, illustrious career in the gaming industry already. And um, for the last, I think, six years or so, you've been working with GSN Games. Um, so give us a little bit about how you got started um, and eventually how did you end up sort of, you know, uh, leading design teams at these large studios? Uh, what was that career sort of like? If you can give a TLDR version, then we can sort of peel the layers and go more specifics into the interesting bits as well. Sure, of course. Um, how detailed do you want me to go? Absolutely, just go for it, right? <laughs> so I was born on a on a, on a cold Tuesday morning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so uh, let me start from the education side of things, right? Because I think up till then, um, there was just um, just the regular, you know, studies and all. But I have a I have an educational background of engineering, so I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. I worked in a couple of places um, uh, before I pursued my masters in the in, in the U.S. in industrial and systems engineering, and um, it was there when I was you know um, I was pursuing a career in um, in ERP systems. This is SAP, Oracle, all of that stuff. Um, and I think at that point, I really felt that, you know, I, this was not what I wanted to do. And I was, you know, I, I, I felt that I was, you know, kind of doing things because this was supposed to be what I was supposed to do. Right? So, um, it wasn't really working out. Fortunately, back then the recession also kind of, you know, played spoil sport. There weren't many projects, et cetera, et cetera. So I came to Hyderabad. We were looking for projects here and, uh, I got in touch with one of my very good friends from back way in college, uh, who was uh, who had in fact changed careers and started. He was in he was in TCS and then he switched jobs and he worked in he he uh, he was working as a game designer in Dhruva. Basu Namdar is his name. So I we, we we both were chatting and we had this you know long discussion and he was like, hey, listen, why don't you why don't you try a Dhruva, right? Um, you definitely have a passion for games and you really don't want to be where you are at. So why don't you give it a shot? So I gave it a shot. Um, and uh, both uh, Rajesh and Raju were very, very welcoming, very, very accommodating. In fact, I, I, owe, I owe a lot of my gaming career to, uh, you know, to their willingness of giving me a shot at uh, Dhruva Entertainment back in 2009, right? So that's how I got my start uh, in gaming. Um, I was... Um, I was working on uh, my first game was a uh, was a hidden object game, right? So I think we were developing. I think back then mobile wasn't really that big, um, not not in the iPhone, uh, uh, you know, Android sense anyway. So that's uh, so I was working on hidden object games, some casual PC titles here and there. Um, did that for a while. Uh, 
I, 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 along with a bunch of talented people, developed uh, Dhruva's first, uh, you know, iOS game as well. At that time, that was a that was a big uh, that was a big moment for me. Um, and uh, then, then you know, things things were just going on the the, the, the way they are. Um, we we did get into some outsourcing uh, projects with Zynga as well at that point. So I was handling a lot of content design also. Um, but yeah, it was just a back and forth between you know doing doing our own games, uh, doing uh, developing games for clients, and then doing some art, uh, outsourcing. Um, I was there for about five and a half years uh, before I decided to move on, um, and uh, I joined a company called Hashcube. Met a bunch of very talented people. They were working on what I felt was like the best Sudoku game ever because that game got me actually playing Sudoku. I I really never had a uh, you know fondness for Sudoku before that. Um, that didn't last too long, however. You know, I had my I had my reasons, um, um, and that's when I uh, joined GSM. Right. Um, same somebody contacted me from GSM. Was like, hey, listen, are you interested? Uh, there's a position opening. Uh, there's a position open. So I applied for it, and well, everything went uh, went fairly well. And uh, that was about six and a half years ago. Um, uh, I I joined the Bingo Bash team as a senior game designer six and a half years ago, and uh, that's where I have been at right uh, ever since. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that game when the opportunity presents uh, later on during the talk. But that's that's like the 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 TLDR version of it. Talk about retention, huh? <laughs> right? <laughs> like six <laughs> years plus at one studio, five and a half or so years yeah. of the previous studio, right? So I think yeah. uh, for folks who might understand a little bit about the the data side of uh, games, you know, ideal case of retention here, right? Right, solid retention <laughs> at a game studio, at least from a career perspective, right? So, but but cool. So. Uh, you know, I, I started my career at exactly the same time, peak of the 2008 financial crash. My first job uh, was trying to get into games, didn't really get in. Um, at, at like uh, I ended up working with a very big hedge fund on the finance side, quickly realized I hated finance, right? But I wanted to marry my love for technology with games and ended up uh, taking a long way to get into the industry. So, you know, like it's interesting how sort of our, our roadmap kind of started together in same point in time around the financial crash, but then took a very different pathway. So you are a mechanical engineer by education, right? And today we see this pattern a lot as well, that there are a lot of people going through mechanical, civil, a lot of these other degrees that while they, when they're joining in, they don't really understand whether they are really excited about it, not excited about it, what to expect and not expect. And then you took this, 180 degree U-turn and went into a completely different role that had nothing to do with your degree, right? Okay, we have somebody yes. else in the mechanical engineer in the chat as well, uh, Abhishek. So, uh, you know, like, like it's a very common pattern that we have also seen within Outscale for people who are excited about exploring a career in games, right? <clears throat> and they come from sort of all of these diverse backgrounds. So what was it that kind of got you started back then Right, like what kind of gave you the courage to take that leap of faith and jump? And today, uh, when you're on the hiring side of the table, right, when you're on the other side making the decision to hire people, right, and people are coming in, uh, applying to GSN uh, from these other degrees that have nothing to do with game design, what kind of things today are you looking at from a talent perspective to understand whether they can be a good fit or a budding designer who can bloom into somebody really awesome, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think um, I think it all it all boils down to you know whether whether you have the passion to build things, right? Um, I think it all stems from that. Um, if you know, because because the idea of of developing games is you know it, it it's it's a very nice one, uh, you know, um, on the top, right? Hey, listen, I want to I want to make games. I I play a lot of games, so I want to make games. I you know I want to you know I want to be up there. I want to be. You know, in the ranks of the top game makers, and so it's all very, very, it's all very enticing. But I think, um, at least coming from an engineering background, what what I realized was there's a lot under the hood, right, of of of, of getting things done. Um, but by the way, I can't I can't do anything with the car uh, as of today. Like I I wouldn't know the front side to the back side of a car today. I'm, I'm like I I've lost everything. But um, I think that gave me an, an understanding of uh, of how to look at things, right. And and this is what I would also look at uh, when 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 we get applicants 
who are not from you know a, a traditional uh, gaming university or a program who are looking into into a job into game design right is a like listen you've got to you've got to be able to want to build things right you've really because because that itself is you know once you're married to building things you are married to everything that goes along with it right um, building things getting it demolished starting all over again etc etc and you've got to have a very very uh, i think a very strong eye towards what really makes things work right so uh, we 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 try to gauge and assess and see if candidates have those qualities right because i i'm i'm a very firm believer and i and i think this is what has helped me over the years is when i when i look at when i play a game or when i look at a system or when i look at anything you know uh, i think sometimes i do spend a little too much time looking at an ice cream maker and wonder how these things work but i think we need to understand right like what uh, what makes this thing uh, tick right um, and as any mechanical object it's it's any it's any game system right uh, what goes in what goes out uh, what happens when i press this like even small things like you know a jump that a character can make right has got like hundreds and thousands of you know, thousands, but hundreds of parameters that you can that can actually affect, right? So uh, you know, length of the jump, trajectory, all of that stuff, right? I think if you if you have if you have been through a career that has given you the ability to think like that, or if you just think like that naturally, right? Um, then I think you have a very good chance of 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 you know making a career in game design because that is what I think makes you or that's one of the key components right of of what makes you a strong designer knowing like you know what 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 your actions can have effects on right and what are the moving parts uh, and the more you can dissect that um the better you get i feel right not to the point where you just you know get analysis paralysis but you know uh, you do need a sufficient depth of understanding how systems work right uh, the analogy that i like to often take is like hey listen think about you know if you were making a lego sculpture with you know 100 blocks versus if you had to make a lego sculpture out of two blocks right like you can you can there is only so much you can do with two blocks versus 100 blocks right so th the moment you can start getting yourself into the mindset where you can break things into the smaller finer pieces that make it work the more successful you will be not just in game design right any kind of design uh, career that you would want to take up yeah, no, I think uh, that's very well said. But just to step back, I just realized that sure. uh, some people actually might not completely understand what game design even is, right? Uh, because at least yes. personally, when people are looking to explore a pathway in, in the gaming industry, a career, etc., right? Like they often overlap between game art and game design, right? Because those like people think, oh, designing is about drawing stuff, about creating visual things etc right like whether it's 2d whether it's 3d animation so uh maybe if you want to just for the audience uh quickly explain from a perspective of a complete layman like how would a fundamental designer work differently from an artist okay um so again um these are these are these are these are my views my suggestions um uh, my observations um i so i would i would kind of step back and and not answer that question as in like how how does a designer you know uh, di uh differ from an artist because i have this belief that uh, there's a lot common right with every function in game development and i'm a i'm a very strong believer of that right but like to semi answer your question how what a designer would be responsible for right um so you are usually responsible for you know hey you come up with the pitch or the idea, right? So first you start with an idea, like, hey, listen, this is this is the problem I want to solve, or this is the game that I want to make, right? So you've got to be able to figure that out first. Again, these are in very broad terms, and this may differ from, you know, where you are in the project, which company you are in, et cetera, et cetera. But in my opinion, this is a very, very broad outline of what it, uh, what it means. So you come up with an idea, you, you figure out a problem that you want to solve, and then you pitch. Right. Um, so that's part one. Part two, pitching. Uh, I mean, you've got to figure out. You've got to be able to put it succinctly. What is it that you want to try to solve? You know, uh, uh, convey it to the folks that that need to be convinced. Right. Um, and once everything is done, well, I think then comes like the 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 blueprint, the blueprinting or the GDD phase that that a lot of us call it. Right. Where you actually put you you basically transcribe your thoughts into into words. Right. On on paper or on document word whatever right um that's what you got to do um 
after that you've got to be you've got to be able to you know convey like you know you've got to be able to be the person who goes in between uh, many teams to answer any questions that you may have not been able to answer in the documents etc cetera, etc cetera. and if the game requires you know say building levels or or building certain certain stages etc you may or may not be able to uh, take part in that depending on whether you have a level design or not right play test uh, you know see that because this is the main thing right that all of this is 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 basically working towards player experience and what the player is uh, is is actually you know experiencing right so um everything can line up in your document everything can be fine right but if it doesn't if the ex if it's not executed the way you envisioned or the way the players would enjoy it then you know it, that that's where um that's where things go wrong right so you've really got to you know be able to play test and see if things are executing the way you had imagined right uh, i think uh, today uh, or at least the last uh, 7 8 years um data has become a, a big part of, of 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 design so i would say even looking at what kind of features that you have made what games you have made what effects it has has on players i think you can get very very objective data to tell you hey listen this is working this is not working and then how you take that information and iterate right i think that that iteration part is also very important because at least a lot of the games that i have been working on and i think the majority of your audience will probably be working on are are games that that have a long shelf life right that that improve month on month year on year so that has now i believe become an important part of you know what uh, of 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 what the game designer needs right but yeah i think this is in a nutshell uh, what what i think a game designer would do how it if like you know how it differs from an artist well i i, I think that um um, there are there are some key aspects that I've talked about, right? That that may that an artist may necessarily not get into, but would definitely not uh, encourage them to not get into, right? So you know, for example, I don't think that ideating would be something that uh, ideating or pitching would be something that an artist would get into, right? They are more of an executionary role of 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 your vision and your ideas, right? Um, and and some of them may not be you know that keen on okay seeing impact on revenue on, on revenue retention etc cetera, etc cetera, right although i think that's kind of i believe that's the mindset we, we kind of need to change i believe everybody should be involved in stages in 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 proportional manners of course but i think um the, the ownership largely at the start and the end uh, would lie on a designer um as compared to an artist right yeah in a traditional sense yeah perfect so um I think you mentioned touched on a little bit about the ideation part, right? Like a, a designer sure. would probably be the person who takes up responsibility of ideation of a project as well in certain extent, right? Versus an artist might not, right? A lot of the people who are entering into this industry, right? Like I think maybe I was naive, but I see a lot of people naive like me today as well, right? Um, when we are excited about getting into a new company, we are like, hell yes, we're going to make the next GTA from day one, right? Bam, right? Like usually, usually that's what gets a lot of folks excited about joining a new company, starting a new career, um, be it transitioning from yes. say like, um, like we have a lot of folks in Outscale who have transitioned from working with TCS and Infosys and actually making it into a gaming company as a developer, as a game developer, right? And usually the, the big picture in people's mind is like, bam gta day one right right or assassin's <laughs> creed on day one right like and i'm gonna be the only person who's gonna do it right so, yes. so usually people have this big grand vision of the kind of game projects that we get to work on we'll touch about um these aspects a little bit but like because you specifically touched on the ideation part right and i'm curious to learn about um uh, um broadly within the industry where does usually ideation come from um whether it's kind of like more business driven whether it's more and especially today, you also mentioned, right? Like data has started to play a lot more role in terms of driving decisions and business uh, parameters as well. So, so where does today ideation come from? And specifically, if you can share some details about how does the ideation process inside GSN specifically work as well, right? Uh, because GSN is a fairly uh, large game studio and and you know has a good brand presence in the in the market, right? Uh, uh, getting to know about how ideation works within these uh, can give a lot of insights in terms of what kind of projects are even feasible, not feasible, and so on and so forth, and sets kind of the right expectations uh, broadly. Sure. 
Um, so on the on the first question, so again, um, how does ideation start? Uh, what's the you know what's the genesis of an of an idea? I think it all it all depends on where you are in the project, right? Like so, for example, if you if you if you want to if, if you don't have a game and you want to create a game, right? I think that would put you on a different path on on ideation as compared to if you were already in a like a like a thirteen year old game like us. Um, that those ideation uh, processes are slightly different, I feel, right? So coming to the first part, like, hey, listen, if you if you, if you feel that you've got an interesting game idea in your mind and you want to get something done, right? Um, I I would say you you probably need to ask yourselves a few questions, right? So is this like what kind of game do I want to make? And more importantly, um, you know, will I be able to make that game, right? So one person making GTA. Six probably not going to be possible. Although sometimes it feels like there is just one person making GTA with time it, you know, it's taking to launch it up. But um, um, but you've you've got to be able to balance both those things out. Like what do I want to make, um, and and do I have the resources to pull it off? Um, and if you want to slightly go ahead, you can just even look at market viability and say, listen. So if I what am I doing this for, right? If I'm if I'm trying to make a commercial game, like is there a place for for this kind of a concept out in the market? Do I need to do a little more research or, hey, listen, is this something that I want to do for myself so that, you know, there's a niche a group of players who would want to play that, right? So I think you probably have to consider these three questions, maybe a few more before you start, uh, before you start ideating, right? Um, and I think there, I, I, I would go with play with your strengths. If it is your, you know, if, if it's your first idea or your second idea, right? Um, like, and if you're doing it for, you know, your, your, your own project, or if you are going indie, do something that you would like to play, like, you know, something that you would like to make, right? I mean, because you would really need all of that to see you through uh, the end of the project, right? On methods of ideation, I believe there are many, right? Uh, and I think that could go into a whole different talk, but uh, I think those, those methods would also, would also be different, whether you are working on a new game as an indie uh, developer, or if you're working on a on a game that's already working for, uh, that's already up and running for the last 30 minutes, right? So on the second part, I think, uh, so for us at Bingo Bash, um, so I wouldn't comment on GSN games. Um, I, you know, I, I, would, I would comment on Bingo Bash, right? Because that's that's what I know, that that's what, you know, that's what we've been working on. So, you know, with a game that's lasted all this, you know, 12, 13 years, uh, the kind of questions that we ask are different, right? So it's like it's not like, hey, listen. So what game do we make, right? Like, duh, we're making bingo, right? Um, it's 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 all about, hey, listen. There are there are a few things that we would like uh, for us to improve, right? Um, like, hey, listen. Like, there is supposed like there's no social in the there are no social aspects in the game, right? So what can we do to improve social aspects in the game? So then we start ideating on you know uh, social features that would make sense for our audience. Right. Uh, you could take a look at it from a retention perspective and say, hey, listen, you know what? Maybe we need to give players long-term aspirations to stay in the game. Sure, it's a bingo game and it's a it's a luck-based game primarily, right? But we want players to feel that, hey, listen, if you know if they don't log in every day, they're missing out on something very cool. So how do we build that? Right. So what we are essentially doing now is like thinking about other things apart from just hey, listen, what game do we need, right? So that uh, that that ideation line is uh, sort of different from hey, listen, or oh, what game do we make? Right, right now we're looking on improving it, on how we can, uh, you know, how we can encourage growth, um, and how we can make this game last for another twenty years. Right, um, so those two lines are kind of different. Got it. So I think uh, in that, so the ideation can be about the entire game, or can be with features inside the game, like yes. like you mentioned on like okay. Uh, uh, bingo can be a solo person game, but can we add some layer of connectedness and socialness to it as well, right? So the yes, ideation yes. can be around what kind of social features we want to include, right? So, um, yes. so as you're working with your team within JSON as well, right? Like, um, uh, like, do you have mechanisms inside the team that are laid out where anybody can suggest ideas, uh, or it's usually sort of um, uh, some top-down structure where ideas come from the top and then get tested, etc. So if you can share a little bit about in practicality while working on a game team inside a, you know, uh, a well-established studio, how would uh, an individual member feel that like, they can also make a contribution to sort of new exciting ideas? Um, can they be tested? How, how would that typically work out? Yeah, so... Um... 
Okay, so to answer that question, I would like to you know classify the kind of stuff that we do into into two parts. Right, one is your regular content cadence. Um, so we uh, at Bingo Pass, we sh we ship uh, one room every twenty eight days, every month, right? Um, and there are some small you know events that go along with it. So the, this is on a con uh, a, a constant content trend, right? This is something that we've got to do. Um, and uh, there are other features that that I would like to call as like say bold beats, right? Um, these are features that would enhance that Bingo experience. Like so, like as an example, we talked about a social feature, right? Um, our players would expect it, but if we do deliver on deliver on it, you know, we 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 expect um, more engagement, more attention, and all of that. Right? So these are the two 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 broad classifications that I would like to make. Um, so on the con uh, on the content uh, aspect, the, the the one that has that constant content cadence, there we've got established already established rules and parameters that you've got to work within, right? Um, so our rooms have a set of parameters that you have to design within, right? Um, and it's not it's not like hey, listen, that you know there there is no room for innovation or nothing, right? In fact, I think the more restrictions you have, the more creative and the more innovative. You have to become right, but there are a certain limit. There are certain limits within which we have to stay, especially in terms of economy. How, how you know uh, how often uh, you know players get rewards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So we've got like a, a a set bunch of parameters that we have to ideate within, right. Um, and on the other side, uh, well, that's just looking at hey, listen, okay, so we feel that X Y Z is missing from our game, or we have seen that you know, so-and-so game is doing this very nicely. We should probably get a version of that that works for our audience and our game, right? So we, we kind of take a different approach on, 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 on these two broad uh, you know, topics. Um, as far as contribution is concerned, well, of course, the design team is at, at the core of things, right? The design team is um, um, looking at, hey, listen, how do we solve both problems? Uh, we have encouraged, and we still do, we always will, Right, uh, an environment where anybody uh, has, you know, you know, can come up to anybody in the organization and hey, listen, give a suggestion or give a feedback or even give ideas uh, for uh, for different different, uh, you know, uh, for, for each of these uh, parts, right? And um, although um, although it's not to the level that you know we would all wish for that 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 you know that that utopia of where everybody's contributing there is uh, there is still a, a very very uh, good and positive uh, amount of folks who do give suggestions right on on either side um it's uh, it would be wrong to believe that or assume that only the designers know what need to be done right or only like say a person from function x would know how to do that job of course they are the subject matter experts right and their experience counts for something but I think not. I think I know we we have a very very uh, flat way of uh, working that way, and there is a we encourage a good flow of ideas from anywhere possible, right? Yeah, no, I think uh, that's very perfectly said. Most of the times, actually, very great good ideas don't even come from designers, right? Yes. Uh, a lot of the times, at least in my personal experience, on a lot of diverse game teams, from real money games to MMORPGs to runners and shooters, et cetera, right? Like I've seen uh, people with very diverse experience playing diverse kind of games. When they bring that experience to the table and are able to bring in, oh, I played this game 10 years ago and it had this really cool uh, you know, interaction or mechanic or some NPC conversation. What if we feel mold that and try to in integrate that kind of a thing in our game, right? So yes. it's about the team kind of bringing together their diverse knowledge base and their vast experience and trying to inculcate that into whatever um, kind of a, 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 whether it's a problem, whether it's a core metric we are trying to improve, whatever scenario we're trying to fit into, right? And that's where I feel like ideas come from everywhere, but the designer's role is to kind of make them fit seamlessly into the current game that we have, right? And yes. make that kind of work in that world. So, so people do often misunderstand that game designer's job is to pump in all the ideas, but actually ideas come from a lot. It's just that the designers make sure that they, they fit in seamlessly into whatever project we are building, right? It doesn't seem out of place and so on and so Absolutely. forth, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Perfectly said, right? And I think um, uh, it has some challenges as well, right? You know, you know, sometimes somebody come, may come up with a great idea, but it wouldn't fit your game, right? Uh, so you've got to do either of those two things, either figure out like what are some of the things that you can take 
and actually put because you know these these guys these folks aren't designers right they wouldn't understand the nuances that that you usually have to deal with on a day to day basis uh, so you've got to figure out what is it that they're trying to say right and and get that distilled version to see if that works uh, and be very open right to 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 sit with them and to even give feedback and say listen you know what this is a great idea etc cetera, etc cetera, but i think it needs so and so right so 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 let's kind of work on it and see you know uh, what we get in the next iteration i'm there right let's let's support each other etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, i think so like you correctly mentioned right that's 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 i think like you know the the the, the perfect uh, example right of of what a game designer needs to be more of a facilitator of sorts uh then a generator especially in bigger companies where you have got where you've got ideas coming from you know so many places right if you're if you're a one man team uh, you probably will not get <laughs> get ideas from anywhere else but yeah in larger organizations you do need that skill yeah yeah so perfect. perfect perfect so before we dive in guys uh regarding learning more about uh, uh param's experience working with a large scale game like bingo there's a small poll uh, we are just about to launch and there's just literally one question on it you'll see it on the screen pop up if you don't see it on the screen just uh, go to the bottom right corner and see the poll section uh, the question is fairly straightforward if you are already working in the industry then just choose whichever domain fits you best if you are uh uh working towards entering this industry then just pick the role which you are going to work towards as well right so just uh take about 10 seconds more uh so that you guys can quickly answer that and after that we're just going to jump in and learn more about uh param sort of hands on experience working with uh the bingo team uh trying to scale that product up and sort of the challenges that come with sort of you know growing a a large ip like that right um okay looks like almost more than 2 70% of the audience have posted so um i'll close the poll in 5 4 3 2 1 done all right thank you thanks everyone for joining in looks like we have uh, i'll share the results as well uh, looks like we have almost 52% of the folks who are from programming and then design comes in second so i guess param i win uh you lose <laughs> just kidding <laughs> but 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 we have a good healthy mix of uh, folks from the audience as well so so that's good to share um but awesome um and meanwhile guys if you guys have any questions as well please feel free to drop them in the chat i'll keep uh, pausing in between to scan through the questions from the chat as well and uh, piyush and the rest of the outskip team can help me with the questions from other channels perfect so uh moving on um uh, param if you can share a little bit about um uh, the bingo game that you have been working on and and now leading the charge on the design side um uh, just a little bit of our first a little bit of understanding of the context of what the game is what scale is it at uh, probably because uh, you've been with the game for a while now right like when you joined in what scale it is was and where you have been able to get the game to over the course of the years right and and share us a little bit about the challenges that you see in trying to grow a game um uh, which has some kind of a familiarity so when people hear the word bingo they already know what we're talking about right uh, in trying to scale a game like that what kind of challenges that you see from especially from a design standpoint sure um so uh... quick uh, quick summary on on bingo bash um, i believe we are currently the the number two bingo uh, game in the in the market from a revenue perspective um, the game is about uh, 13 years old slightly slightly more right so i joined in like when when it was already 7 years old right uh, and there has been a lot of there has been a lot of innovation that has been taken place before and after as well uh so that's that's a long period of time right for a game to be running uh and to be running so strongly we had our second best year i think last year 2021 right which goes to show that uh, the game isn't like kind of you know riding off into the sunset in fact uh, we we are we are on a mission to you know reinvigorate the game and to turn a new leaf right we we, we want to become the best bingo game out there uh, we want our players to feel that way as well 
Um, so there's a lot of exciting stuff happening. So that's that's a little bit about you know the the, the, the timeline aspect of it. Um, as far as the basic, the basically what the game is. So I think Bingo difference, Bingo Bash differentiates itself from from all the other Bingo games by the uh, you know with the with with the kind of um, uh, different unique uh, way of playing Bingo, right? So we we do Bingo very differently um, as compared to most others. Uh, we, I, I like to say we gamify bingo one step further, right? So, um, bingo at its core is, is just about, you know, it's, it's about luck. You get a few cards, um, and, and some balls are called. And if you spot the, you know, if you spot that number, you mark it. And if you get enough, if you get a pattern, you win, right? But we gamify that one step further. We, we were the innovators. We were the pioneers of putting a narrative element on the bingo card itself, right? So it's, it was no longer about... You know, marking numbers and and you know putting spots on them, but it was about hey, there's a character, right? And he's say Indiana Jones, and and he's off to you know find that chalice somewhere on the card. So he's basically blocked by all these uh, numbers that act as walls. So the more walls you destroy, uh, you know, the you you make a path for him to to reach the chalice, right? So we we were the pioneers there, um, and I think that has what basically you know that is that had been the start of what started uh, separating us from the rest of the pack right um and then i think the, the the what we what we like to call the collections meta really started picking up where hey listen so you've played a bingo right so indiana jones has 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 got that goblet so now what right uh, there is a mini adventure that follows after the main bingo game itself and once you complete that or once you interact with it you go back into the bingo room right so this is i i believe this loop itself and and how we have innovated on this over the last uh, eight years, right? Possibly even more, is what has differentiated us from the from the rest of the of the game. Like, you know, you, you play Bingo Bash and sometimes you wouldn't know you're playing a Bingo game, right? Because we've got elements of Mass 3 in it, we've got elements of, you know, a puzzle solving in it, right? But it still stays true or we try very hard for it to, you know, stay true to the whole core of Bingo, which is, you know, luck-based casual gameplay, Right. Um, so that's what really, you know, sets us apart. And this is what we want to try to leverage over the upcoming years. Right. Um, the challenges that that basically faces are, I think, I think, I think common with, with, with every with every um, game studio out there, you know, it's just like, how do we grow the app? Right. Um, how do we how do we make this appeal to more and more players? How do we, you know, make the players who do find our game through whatever channel? How do we make them stick? longer how do we make them you know uh, have have more fun how do we make them form uh, bonds with other players right so that you know they continue on this path together so these are some of the challenges that we are facing uh, or that we are trying to tackle today right because we think that you know the whole core of bingo we pretty much it's not that we don't innovate we are constantly innovating on it we come up with about 13 almost you know, 13 casual titles every every year, right? Once one every 28 days. So that that that's going on, right? But we are spending enough. We are, we're spending a lot of uh, you know manpower, lot, a lot of resources in terms of you know uh, design, product, art, etc. Right? Trying to figure out how do we make this uh, product grow, right? So we are looking at you know like like I mentioned earlier, progression systems, social systems, you know, um, systems that uh, get players to compete against each other. We, um, we, we, we have done studies where we've tried to figure out what our players players want, right? What are their wants? What kind of players are they? Do they like competition? Do they like social interaction? Once we got a read on that, we compared that to our game and, say, and, and said, hey, listen, okay, so this is what our players want. This is what we have right now, right? So there's a big delta in what, uh, what they would like and what we are providing them. So how can we, you know, um, how can we fill that gap, right? So the team is currently working on a lot of things to try to you know bridge that gap without losing the sight that hey listen it's a bingo game right I mean um, there is there is a there is a there is a danger of over designing things right um, that uh, that I have personally made uh, this mistake a lot of times um, but you know we we just try to get better with every mistake that we make we need to understand that in the end players come to play bingo how do we you know subtly put these hooks into the game that, uh, that that make them enjoy this game a lot more, right? 
so those are some of the things that uh, that that we are currently working on yeah it's in- interesting to see that even with engineering there are similar analogies right like you mentioned over designing right like we yes. have the same thing as over engineering right you yes. start thinking about one feature and and you implement like the version 10 of it today itself whether you don't even know whether you need the version 10 really fancy version of this simple feature just to make sure that oh if my designer asked to make this change let me implement that today as well right and mm-hmm. later i'll just make one line change and then it will work right so that over engineering over designing is always the uh, it's a, a it's a root cause of a lot of evil <laughs> in the industry as well right because obviously we want to try and be more fancy about uh, yes. showcasing our skills like oh look we are so great designers and and engineers that we know all this fancy hoopla right yes but, yes but absolutely yeah. <laughs> and, and and so again just just to just to emphasize on that point right that whole redesigning reengineering uh, not not re sorry over right over designing over engineering over whatever right it yeah it 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 can and it will cause you a lot of issues you know often like you more is never better or it always never is right um you need to find like what is the actual problem that you're trying to solve and sometimes the solution is that hey listen you've got too many barriers before xyz happens right um and like i said like you know i have been i have been making these mistakes all my all, all my career and i think a lot of us still do but the important part is that you understand that hey listen this is not the, the, the right way to get it right um fortunately we are working in a uh, at least in bash we are working in a company that you know we are encouraged to do whatever we think uh, would would make it work so we are the you know we are the owners of our own destiny right which kind of puts a little bit of pressure on our shoulders but you know it also gives us the freedom to try out uh, things right the important point the, the important part being like hey listen when do you back out and say maybe that wasn't a good idea right and and let's let's go back to the drawing board and let's try another angle right so mm-hmm. it's it's always important to kind of lean out the entire experience right um uh, and that's that's a, that's an ongoing challenge for us right uh, i think but i'm sure we'll get better uh, at it over the next uh, few years yeah yeah i think uh, that's a very good advice for everybody in the audience when people yes. with 12 years of experience say that we are still making mistakes and learning every day right like learning just mm-hmm. never stops today right so so having that that mindset and attitude to say that we recognize that as professionals we'll continue to improve at our skills and and what we do but at the end of the day the fundamental way that we learn is by making a lot of mistakes as well and then keep improving at it right so um, yeah yeah uh, i had a bunch more questions lined up on the things that you had mentioned but i see a bunch of questions lining up in in the chat as well so i'll start tackling them uh, sure. a couple of them so um uh, hamid is asking what if someone does not have the creative kind of a mind um how can one overcome that i'm i'm assuming he means like he wants to become more creative uh individual right so we talked about being creative when it comes to sort of understanding the the real world dissecting the problems earlier on in the chat and the conversation right so so maybe the context is yeah. from there yeah sure i mean so i think i think the the key point is that 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 you know that you can become more creative right Uh, there's there's no there's no magical bolt that will hit you one day when you're off walking and then you all of a sudden you become the best designer or the best artist or best whatever right um creativity uh is is a skill that you can acquire if you put enough work at it right and 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 that's all it is right you've just got to be able to figure out you know um what, how to get there so that's so there are many many ways you know if you if you i think if you if you go online you find you know a billion ways on how to become more creative but what i would advise you to do is you know just just like if especially from a designer's perspective right um expose you expose yourself to you know games out there um and, and play them as a designer right try to like like my my go to method is just to be able to you know dissect something into its atomic parts right so like how you would break down a compound into you know a uh, different elements that's that's if you can get into the habit of doing that then you've got more lego pieces right then you've got more blocks that you can mess around with if if your view of the system or a machine is just uh you know uh, just yay deep then 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 you don't know what you can move around to you know uh, to to make magic happen and that's what creativity is about right it's about knowing what all you can tinker with what all ingredients you have to make that magic potion 
Um, so um, if you don't think you're creative right now, well, that's only because you haven't exercised those muscles. Uh, get at it, right? Start start playing games, start dissecting games, start you know making your own games. Try to understand that everything is made out of uh, single, single pieces. And once you do, you will realize that uh, you've got like a lot of control in your hands, right? And, and that's what basically it is. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, that's a very good, uh, and very encouraging advice for people to say, oh, this senior person is telling me to go play more games, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> that sounds very exciting to become better at my career, right? But but I think, uh, uh, you know, what you very uh, aptly sort of highlighted, right? It's all about training your mind slowly and, and iteratively to understand things the way they are, right? So imagine any, pick Mario as a game, right? If you're playing Mario for the first time and you try to make a jump and you die, right? Think about why did the designer make me die here, right? Or why did it take me 10 times to clear a simple jump? Or yes. uh, why is there this uh, button? When I press this button, that my character dashes through walls, right? Like try to question every aspect of it as why. And I think you'll start to understand yes. what's happening, right? Yes. And and the beauty of this is that you can do this while watching YouTube. You can do this while watching uh, games and videos. You can do this by playing games. Pretty much every aspect of your life where you have a product or something that you're interfacing with that somebody ended up putting a lot of thought into designing, yes. you can actually do this as to why did they make it like this? Because if they did it, they would have some reason for you to behave in a certain way, right? You can play a game that's really hard in difficulty and you'll get to understand why the designer made the game so hard. For example, like the Souls-like game or yeah. why the uh, people wanted to make a multiplayer level in a way that people come together to solve a puzzle, right? So for me, why is the beauty question? Yes. Keep asking why at every step and you'll start to uncover a lot of beautiful details and that literally that's nothing more than creativity right? yes. like once you start yes. to understand right yes i i, I yes. don't know if you agree or not no no i absolutely agree man and 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 so just adding on top onto that right so here's a hack right these are these are things that are that a lot of designers and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a big team has worked years and years on right and you're seeing the finished product if you if you develop this ability to ask why and figure out these questions figure out these answers then you've basically almost like a vampire, right? Like kind of kind of sucked out all their knowledge and, and now you're that much smarter, right? Uh, and so the, the the variety of games that you play, you know, uh, and the more you ask these, you will get a lot of experience from that also, right? In fact, I think that was a large part of what kind of, you know, gave me the edge when, 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 when I was new into the industry, right? Is because I almost always played like a designer, like that why, why, why was always there with me, right? So I got a, I got a heads up. Uh, I got a head start there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, but unfortunately, our Indian education system doesn't encourage people to ask why, <laughs> right? <laughs> we we get encouraged to shut up and just mug up shit and and write it in an exam and clear the exam, right? So yes. so that is something that we encourage heavily. Uh, all the folks who are joining out skills, just ask why, right? Like yes. Annoy annoy the mentors in the live sessions whenever you are learning. Keep asking why, why, why. Let them explain every aspect of it, right? And that's how right. you learn and grow and sort of, you know, uh, take it to the next level. But yeah, right. like in, there are a lot of good questions coming in. Um, so um, uh, Manas is asking, what is the most challenging aspect of designing a board game? Uh, uh, or rather, I'm assuming taking a board game into a digital game, especially when it's a popular sort of an offline uh, kind of a game. Interesting question. Um, so I think if, so for me, the, the challenge would be that if your board game relies very heavily on face-to-face -face social interactions, uh, you know, um, you know, you want to kind of read what that person's body language is, right. And you want to kind of figure out if they've got an ace up their sleeve or whatever. I think that is very difficult to translate when you take it digitally, right. So that would be like, I think at least my, my, my biggest first challenge um, I haven't, uh, I, I haven't done this all that much to be frank. I've tried my hand at it a bit, but for me, that was, that was the biggest thing. Right. And I think, um, there's, there's, such, there, there's something, there's something about a board game, right. When you see those pieces, when you, when you see a meeple or when you see a house or when you see a farm tile, right. Uh, again, if you, if you feel those are very, very important to your game, but getting that translated in digitally then kind of loses out on it. Right? But I would say the human aspect of it 
for me, it's uh, it's it's the most challenging. Like you know, um, there are times when you know we we play code games in the office, like digitally, and I and I compare it to when we used to play it physically in the office, right? There's a big disconnect. So you know, somehow I feel that is it's not that we don't play it, but I think that 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 disconnect becomes uh, the biggest challenge for me. Yeah, no, I I think I totally agree. It's been always a challenge trying to translate anything that has the body language or facial emotions or reading facial expressions, especially with team games, right? Where yes. you have a teammate and then you have enemies <laughs> or another team that you're playing against, right? So yes. those social dynamics, um, maybe the Facebook beta works takes, takes <laughs> us in that direction <laughs> where we can play that in some <laughs> VR world. Um, yes. Who knows? But but I think we're still quite some time away from that. Um, yep. But yeah. Um, uh, Rishabh is asking, uh, what games have you been playing on the Switch? He just spotted one in your background. <laughs> so I <laughs> didn't oh. <laughs> see that myself. So good job, Rishabh. Okay. <laughs> Anything you want to add? <laughs> Streets of Rage. That's, that's, so that's, that's something that... So I recently switched my Switch. I got the, the OLED version and I just wanted to see how, how better things are. And they are a lot better. Um, slight endorsement for Nintendo. But yeah, I've been playing Streets of Rage. I've you know the the whole uh, uh, Mr. X uh, expansion. I really like the way they they you know they they put almost uh, they put a never ending loop to Streets of Rage, right? So you can just endlessly improve your characters and all. So that's what I've been looking at uh, right now. Otherwise, uh, when when I don't, then it's mostly uh, Mario and Rabbids. That's mm. Yeah, got it. But just uh, before I take a quick quick distraction from the questions, there are really good questions in the chat. How much time on average in a week are you able to actually spend on gaming? Outside work. Not enough, <laughs> right? And I it's... know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's... it's always a, a pain for people in the industry. Once you're on the inside, you just don't get enough time at all to play, right? And, and, yes. and definitely not at all enough at all. But that, yeah. do you have a quantum number of hours that you want to share? This is just for um... my reference. Well, it's 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 around two hours a day, right? Um, mm-hmm. Approximately in the morning and in the evening, um, and and I think my biggest challenge is being able to, you know, just 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 you know, just not play Elden Ring for the you know, third week in a row and say, let me try out some mobile games, right? Uh, so that for me is the biggest challenge. But yeah, yeah just trying out a lot of really diversity good. of games yes. to keep the creativity, like we discussed, flowing as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Um, so Aditya has a good question. Um, so he's been trying to build a RBG card game and then he's been trying a lot of different card games as well available on the market. And and as he has started to build the game, new ideas have started to come in and, and he's been trying to incorporate some of those ideas but realizes that it has become a tangled mess. Um, yes. So so what's your advice to say focused on uh, you know something more idea slash design so that you know it just doesn't go out of control? Yeah, again, um, I'm going to do my best, but it may not be enough. You, you, you've got to go back to, you know, what is it that I was trying to do with it, right? Uh, to give a little context, it it happens often, right, with, with our processes where you want to start solving a problem, but you end up solving, not solving, you end up creating a different problem altogether, right? So I think they, you what you need to do is, you know, just, just go back and say, listen, what is it that I wanted to do? Um, did I want to make something this complex, or is it, or did I want to make something simpler, right? And go back and see where you can, where you can trip, right? Uh, this is, you know, this feature creep problem is there everywhere, right? Because every idea is a good idea, right? Um, but but you can't take every idea in the world and, and make the perfect game, right? In fact, it's sometimes you just come down to you eliminating things and saying, listen, no, this wouldn't work, this wouldn't work, this wouldn't work. I'm just going to take these three core things. And go ahead. What I would encourage you to do is, in, in, in if you do face such issues, is set yourself some code pillars, right? Like have two, have three. Don't have more than three. I would suggest, right? And say, listen, my game is going to uh, primarily work on these three pillars: one, social interaction; two, blah blah blah; three, blah blah blah, right? And the moment you get an idea that doesn't fit into one of these pillars, you just 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 discard it, right? I mean, save it for later. Save it for another idea. Um, it's when we don't have that, you know, a discipline on ourselves as to, okay, I'm, I want to let this in or I want to park it, is when these things happen. And again, you know, this this happens to everybody, right? Um, even 30 years into the business, you will face these problems. You just get better at it. Uh, just, just, just practice on that discipline. Yeah, yeah. And I think you mentioned it as well. The There is a literal term defined for it, right? 
feature creep scope creep yes. there are different ways to say it as well but all it says is that that you start with something finite in the initial stages but then it suddenly becomes this huge as yes. you're trying to implement it because new new ideas keep coming in from left right center everywhere and at some point you have to draw the line and say no we are not doing this because it just completely blows this thing out of proportion and i think the the pillar suggestion is really good because you cannot just apply it for game projects you can apply it for any projects and anything that you're trying to do as well right yes. like so yes. for us within outscale as well we follow this pillar approach right for us the pillar is uh, uh, job placements for students that come in right into the community so for us uh, every time we think about oh there is this new feature that we want to try and incorporate in either into the cohort program or into the projects or into some community resources we always think about one fundamental question will this help more people get career opportunities right if that is the answer is yes then it just becomes about prioritizing whether yes. how important it is or how uh, you know it can be done sooner versus urgent versus critical right but then it becomes very boolean yes or no whether you want to do it or not right so that pillar approach is very clear just that you want to be very mindful about what kind of pillars you set you don't want to be setting yes. loose pillars that let you say yes to almost everything <laughs> because then you'll be back to square one where you exactly. started right exactly. so so exactly. i i highly recommend the pillar approach because we personally use it on every project everything that we do as well so um but okay cool um cool. ram is asking how do we test sort of new game ideas or features within existing games before investing time and money into it is it just as simple as uh, dropping it into the store and using mm-hmm. analytics or some other type of feature i think we touched on it a little bit in the past and i wanted to actually ask this so i'm glad ram you brought this up so from all your yeah hey great question um, and we we have been kind of uh, you know doing this a lot over the, over the you know last few months years so um, like okay so so take take any idea right say you wanted to build i don't know um, say you wanted to build a different store altogether right um how how players would come into your store and and look for items and select the best deal and go out um it's a big feature right it's going to take like x months to develop 12 months to develop etc and you have no idea how players would react to it right so uh, the mvp approach is 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 uh, what what we do what i would recommend right um try to again understand what you really try to do uh, with this right and try to see if you can get a minimum viable you know uh, product out of that right uh, and say that okay i don't need to build the entire thing let me just build one piece uh and it it'll take us like a tenth of the time to develop and i will then be able to then just showcase it to maybe you know 20% of our players right and and see how they would react to it compared to the 80% who don't have it right so again long story short take a sliver of what you would like to build and uh, release it to a fraction of your player base enough to get uh, you know uh good data you want to give it to two people if you have a million player uh, player base right uh, and see how they would react and then iteratively build on that right uh, you're not going to get there in one shot uh, you're going to get there slowly bit by bit but that is the approach that that we use that's the approach that i would suggest right that's the only way to you know um, to get these big things done right there's this old joke about you know how do you eat a whale right uh and the answer is well one bite at a time right so, so that that's got to be your approach towards uh testing these 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 new things that you're building yeah and i think uh, um there is another uh, uh sort of a philosophy called vertical slice as well yes. that you can you can use so so like you mentioned about the store as an example imagine the same thing applies to like like some kind of a uh a, a new feature that you want to build right and it's a very big thing might take you 6 months to build usually the idea is that you build a small part of it as a yes. what you call it as like a vertical slice between you take like if it's like a cake or something you take a small slice out of it and say if you build that you measure the users engagement and interaction on just that small piece to try and decipher whether this entire feature would work well or not right and that same concept is can be called a vertical slice depending on how the project is structured can be called an mvp a prototype the name and the terminology might change change but the ideology is the same that you build a small portion of it test it out in some way have very clear idea about what metrics you want to test right and say okay here we are testing seven day user 
retention, right? Are people continuing to uh, come back after seven days as well? Or I, am I testing that people are able to buy the 99 cent uh, store item or one 99 cent store item, whatever it is, right? Like you should have that clarity before you jump into this exercise because remember, you're putting a lot of engineering, design, yes. art, animation, all that team manpower behind building that small thing even. And, yes. and it, it's a big team effort for bigger projects, of course, right? Um, and 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 you want to be very thoughtful about those kind of things. So so Absolutely. while exactly. Param sort of kind of gave a very slim down version of it, but with bigger games and bigger projects, the decision making is also something that that's fairly complex behind the scenes. Yes, you can do it just, faster for smaller projects. Yeah, yeah just, just just make sure that the vertical slice or the MVP is uh, very very relevant to what you want to test, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. You know, you may reach a point where the MVP can only be, you know, uh, brought down this much, right? Because it's like, hey, listen, if we if we cut it down further, then we're going to be testing something completely different. Right? Yeah. So I think that understanding is also very important. Yeah. So if you have what exactly you are measuring, then you can decide that in this entire cake, which slice do I want to build and yes. test, right? Yes. Which gives me the most closest met metrics to say that okay, yes, now we can allocate almost a a year of team's bandwidth to build this feature out. Yes. Because we yes. have proof that it works, that it right? Works. Or at least yeah. some close enough proof to say that this works, right? So yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. I think there are a bunch of still more questions. If we pick them up, we'll probably be sitting here for another half an hour. So uh, I know we are shooting on time. Uh, we had you on for one hour and I think we're just hitting that time limit now. So uh, we'll pause from now. What I'll do is I'll, I'll collect some of these questions. Maybe I can share it with you on the email thread or something separately. And then uh, once um, you can take some time next week or so, maybe just write some a little bit on so then you no, can share back with the community uh, in the Discord channel. So um, thanks again, um, you know, Param. Any, any closing words before we sign off? Um, hey, again, it was wonderful uh, to, 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 to have this talk with, with, with all of you. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Only closing thing is, hey, listen, you know what, it's um, um, game design isn't easy, right? It isn't easy. Don't, 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 don't get into it because hey, for all the glory, definitely don't get into it for the money. <laughs> at least not yeah. at the start. There's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that gets into it. But once you're able to you know, uh, find your roots, once you're able to get the hang of it, right? It's one of the most rewarding things that I've done in my life, right? Like I, I can't even imagine how my career started with engineering. But anyway, it's 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 something that takes a lot of work, but it's something that that you can, you know, um, that you can achieve, right? Uh, it's not like something that only a few people have, etc. These are there there are a lot of things that you can do internally, uh, you know, every day to just make yourself a better designer, like not game designer, better designer period. Right. Uh, yeah. Look at things. Explore. Ask those questions. That why, right? Why not this, right? And that's the first step, and that's the most important step. Yeah. Now I can I can hundred percent second that, right? Like one day in in Delhi Metro, I was traveling and I saw one person standing right next to me playing the game that I'd worked on. Oh, right. That's, and that's nice. and it's such a such a weird sensation and such a rewarding experience, right? That that a random stranger you have no idea about, they're going about living their lives and they are playing exactly the game that that you made. And they don't know you are the part of the team, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't need to know, right? Mm -hmm. But it's such a such a weird sensation. And I think this is the beauty about the gaming yes. industry and building games, right? Yes. Like it gets to add some element of fun, uh, distraction, um, anything that's that's beyond the regular sort of core life experience right so but again um thanks again for, for spending the time and, thanks, and you know uh, i think the audience got to learn a lot i personally got to learn a lot for me this is a very good interesting conversation as well and and i'm yeah. i'm really happy to see the quality of the questions as well and thank you again for taking the time to answer that would love to maybe host you again in six months time get an update sure. on what's happening on bingo and dive in more details and maybe have like a design masterclass or something <laughs> you know that would be fun as well awesome thanks uh thanks everyone for joining in and you. and you know uh hopefully i'll see you guys back in discord as well all right thanks guys take care good night